Again this afternoon, join us. It's Math Line. You are in the right place, right time, right everything, okay? But what we need you to do, let's get some calls going, all right? This is going to be a great call-in show. That, hey, that's what we do on Math Line. We let you call in with a problem, and we work it live on the air. Now, you can be any age to call in. We appreciate it when you do. And we want you to have a good problem, and you can have just a fun problem with us, too, all right? But that number, 844-686-2378. By the way, I'm Ernie Robertson. I am your host for this afternoon's session. And just give me a call, and we will have a good time live on the air, okay? Now, to get us primed and ready, what we like to do, and oh, by the way, yes, I mentioned it's free. What we like to do on this show is start off with the problem of the day. So let's go right there, and while we're doing the problem of the day, you guys give us some calls, all right? And so we can get some math going for us here. We're live on the air. It's the last day of the week. We're going to be live, so take advantage of it. And let's see our problem of the day. It says, give the prime factorization of, oh my goodness, how appropriate, 2020. What's the new year? It's 2020. I think last year we did that with 2019 and asked some certain things about it, whether it was prime or composite. Well, this year, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, it is a composite number. We can factor this thing down beyond just 1 and 2020 or 2020 for all you purists out there in the numbers. So how about it? Let's take a look at how we're going to go about this way. There's a lot of ways we could start, but let's check it out, see what's happening. Got the prime factor of 2020. I'm going to bring it here full center, and you can join me at home or library or wherever you might be watching us today. Just take care of it and watch with us. Um, breaking it down, I mean, I see, obviously, there's even numbers here, but I see zeros, which tells me 10 will go in there. And hint, hint, there's a 20, 20, all right? So 20 is a good factor also. So what we're going to do, we're going to try to break off with a good old-fashioned factor tree, and we're going to work this thing down to where we have basically all prime numbers. So the first thing I'm noticing here, I mentioned 20. We can divide 20 into that. And you know, 20 is going to go in there evenly. It really is. And guess what? Because of, well, you see the 2 and the two twenty 20 and the 20. It sounds like there's a 1, 1. So you said, was that 11 or anything? Nope, because 11 times 20 is going to give you, what, 220. We are pushing a little bit higher. This is going to be with 101. All right? For those of you who don't believe me, let's do it real quick on the calculator. All right? So take a look at this. Let's see if I can get myself together. Uh, 20. Now, this is kind of crazy today. 20. And divide that by... What did we say, 20? And I get 101. So now what's important about that is that 101 is a prime number over here, all right? So when we go back in there, we've got, a, we've got that 101. It is a prime number. So we're done. I'm going to circle that because that's part of our answer. Let's kick along a little bit more over here. How about it? We've got 20. How about, oh, there, there are lots of ways to get 20 in there. But we don't want to use 1 in anything because there are other options, better options. How about 4 and 5? Why did I choose 4 and 5? Because it does give us 20. And also 5 is the prime waiting for us, all right? Now, let's go one more time. Break this down. We've got 2. And we've got 2. And, oh, my goodness, all those are primes. So here's your prime factorization. How about it? 2 squared times 5 times 101, 101. And there's your prime factorization. Not a bad one, but we like to throw our year. You know, the year 2020 is one of those. We're going to be writing it down a lot over the next, so what, oh, 350, 60 days, all right? You know, uh, till the end, end of the year, absolutely. So actually, it's moved along farther. Now, you realize it's already the 23rd of January, so actually knock about 23 off of 366 because it's a leap year this year, right? So that'll give you the amount of years left here, uh, days left. We'll get it going here in a minute. It's Thursday, and I'm excited. I've got a caller waiting online, so let's go there. Welcome to MathLine, and who am I talking with this afternoon? Xavier Linton. And can you repeat your first name for me again? Xavier. Xavier. All right. Glad to have you with us today. Did I get that right? Is it Xavier? Yes, sir. All right. Good deal. Where are you calling from? What city or what county? Emma County. All right. Well, good to have you with us. And let us go ahead and see what kind of problem you've got for me to work today. All right. Tell me what you want me to do for you. Um, can you write a mixed number that is equal, um, equivalent to 16 thirds? All right. A mixed number that is equivalent to 16 
third. So that's what we're talking about, starting off with, right? 16 yes, over sir. 3, all right? And I'm, I'm glad you said 16 thirds because that's what that means. That means 16 thirds. Sometimes we can say that's 16 divided by 3 because that's what a fraction does for us. And a lot of times we like to say 16 over 3. All are legit. All those are fine. But I appreciate it. Thank you for saying thirds. Now, how are we going to get to a mixed number? That's what you said, right? We're looking for something that would be of a mixed number, which means an integer and a fraction attached, right? That's what we're looking for. So yes, let's see what's going on with this type situation. I did mention that this means division. So what we're going to do, we're going to take 16 and we're going to divide it by 3. I'm just going to do off to the side here a little division for us, all right? And that's a, a nice, easy way of looking at that. We're going to think, how many times would 3 go into 16? Well, it's not going to go in there evenly, is it? So that's what we're going to have left over. And that's going to be the fraction part that it's going to be our remainder, but we're going to have to make it into a fraction. So let's think, I believe 5 times 3 is going to give us 15, isn't it? Uh-huh, and what do we got left over? I'm going to take 16 minus 15, and I get 1 left over. Now, Xavier, what I want to do is I want to take this 1 and that 3, okay? Because those are my important pieces there. Because what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to divide 3 into 1. It won't go, will it? So no. we are wrapped up with this one, but we'll make it, let me pull it out here. We're going to make that 5, and we're going to make that 1 over 3. So in reducing, and sometimes we call it simplifying, making a mixed number out of it, equivalent mixed number, all those are great ways to describe what we're doing. And we're going to end up with 5 and 1 third. Does that work for you? Yes, sir. Does that work for you? And the whole process, remember, and a lot of, our, a lot of times, you know, when we're doing fractions, we forget that means division. 16 divided by 3, and that's how it works out beautifully for us. Right there we go. And probably some of that, we get to the point we can do that in our head. I bet you can too also, right? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for calling and getting ourselves started out, getting the show started off for us today in a great way. And thank you for taking care of us there. You got any other questions while you're on me? While you're on uh, here? Yeah, number two. Number That's two. okay. Well, okay. Let's have number two. <laughs> what, is, what is number two on this one? What do you uh, got? This is Stacy told her one half cup measuring cup, seven times to have enough flour for a cake receipt. How much flour does a cake receipt call for? Okay, so let's go back again. You, I mentioned I heard a one half. Was there anything attached to that one half? Yeah, one. Um, just one half. Okay, so, and what is, let's go back to the context of it. What it, I've got one half, is it one half cup? Yeah. yeah. And what, a, a cup of what have we got here? Measuring cup of seven times. Measuring cup of seven times. Of enough flour. Of enough okay, flour. Okay, so we got flour, and we're going to do that half cup seven times is that the pro is that what we're saying here yeah okay so we're going to use the cup seven times in other words we're going to basically take a half a cup another half cup half cup half cup until we get seven of those right yeah all right so what we're going to do you mentioned earlier you know you said something about 16 thirds this sounds like we're going to have what seven halves does that sound right to you Yes, we're going to take sir. this half cup seven times, and I'm going to show you how that works. We can make that you know, just a simple little expression, and we're going to say one half times seven. And I'm going to write that over one, and across the numerators, how about it? We get one times seven, which I bet you got that on the tip of your tongue, gives us seven, right? And then two times one will give us what? Two? And that's seven halves, all right? Now, what we did just a minute ago, you asked me to get into a mixed number. I'm going to say, since number one had to do with that, I bet number two wants us to get a mixed number also. So let's see what that's going to give us actually in terms of cups in general. Uh, divide two into seven. It doesn't go even, does it? It's going to go, how many times is it going to go? You got an idea on that? Three. Three. And 3 times 2 is going to give us that 6. And look what we got. We got 1 left over again. We got that 1 left over. And what we need to do is make it into a fraction. So that's going to be 3 and 1 half. And so there you go, 3 and 1 half cups. Does that work? Yes, sir. See how that does? All right. 
And thank you. Some good questions to get us started off today on Math Line. And thank you for calling in today, Xavier. We appreciate you. Thank you, too. All right. Thank you. And have a great day. All right, folks. We see how easy it is. Xavier's leading the way for us here. So you give us some calls, all right, too. 844-686-2378. This is your show. This is what we want you to hear. I get to put my name on the show occasionally, but I, I really do. We love to hear from you. That's what we're here for is to help you all out and to have some good fun with our mathematics here, all right? So thank you, Xavier, for getting us started. We'll see if we can get some more folks on the phones today. We have a busy day in line here. I want to go back yesterday a little bit um, to a thing. I brought up Sokotoa yesterday. Everybody just loves to say Sokotoa. It's a fun, it's a fun expression. And yesterday, Dee Dee had sent us a question, actually at the end of last week, and said, what do those things stand for? What are they about? And today what I want to do is go one step further and I want to show you how powerful these numbers are. We got a right triangle and we mentioned that um, if we, I said yesterday anyway, if we could take an acute angle of sorts, I want to say 32 degrees right down there. And I give you one of these values. Which one do I want to give? I want to give you the hypotenuse. Okay, we'll give you an easy one here. So Dee Dee, here you go. I hope you're watching today. You've gotten, you've gotten really good press the last three days. We've looked at it piece and a piece and a piece because uh, we got this in here back before the Martin Luther King weekend came through. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go, how do we find the measures of X and Y? Now, it's really easy to find the angle up here, by the way, because we have 180 degrees in a triangle. Everybody says, oh, yeah, I knew that. I knew that. So I've used up 32 degrees. I've already used up 90 so basically, if I can think of something plus 32, it's going to give me 90 back up here with these two added together. I think we want to go with 58 degrees. Y'all check me on that, okay? 58 degrees. And you say, what's that important? Just in case you ever had to solve the whole triangle, that simply means find all the degrees. So we definitely have a 90, we have a 32, and we have a 58. Now, question is, how am I going to find X? And I have to use, and we'll, we'll, we'll forget about 58 up here. It's okay. You can use it if you want to, folks out there. It's no problem. But we're going to come back to our 32 because it's just easier to look across and do like that. All right. Now, remember, when we look across, it's called opposite. We have the hypotenuse given. So I'm going to go up here and look at all my little, little statements here. This is sine opposite hypotenuse. This is mm, cosine adjacent hypotenuse. Here's tangent with opposite and adjacent. So look again, what is X involved? X is the opposite leg. Okay, so that's telling me something. We're going to be involving that, and we're also using hypotenuse, so my choice is going to be the first three letters. So, S-O-H, so, and we'll get to ka and toa maybe if we need them, all right? So let's go back to that. We're going to say the sine of, and by the way, we're going to put an angle in there now. Sine of 32 degrees is equal to that X, over 12. Remember, it's opposite over hypotenuse. Sine equals. And we're going to make this real easy, my friends. We're going to put a 1 underneath there. We're going to cross multiply. It's a, it's a proportion. Very straightforward. And folks, this is a very, very powerful way to find links in a right triangle setting here, okay? Especially when they don't have any special degrees like 30 and 60 or 45 and 45. We have to find all those others in between. We've got a great help with our calculator and also the concept of trick. So let's see what's going to happen. We're going to cross multiply, like I said. And we are going to pick up x equaling, how about it, 12 times the sine of 32 degrees. Now, what does that mean to us? How are we going to figure out all that stuff? Because you've got 12. Everybody can figure out 12. But what is this creature, this sine of 32 degrees? Well, let's go to your calculator. And this is where pretty much any engineering or scientific calculator has the letters S-I-N-C-O-S-T-A-N. Well, right there is S-I-N. So we're going to play off of that. And what I want to make sure, we got to do make sure that our mode is correct. You say, what is that about? We want to make sure, see right over here, we got to be not in radian, but degree mode because we're talking degrees. Everything else is happy. You say, well, goodness, Ernie, what's all that stuff? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about a thing. We're where we need to be. Make sure you're in degree. If you're on just a little engineering calculator or a little um, pocket calculator, it should have a place where you can go up there to DEG. You'll see that notice, and that means you're in the right place on it. And they all work a little bit different. That's why I love the graphing calculator, because you just put it down there, and it does what it's supposed to do. Isn't that fun? Now, let's see. We've done that. So let's go back to our set here. Let's clear out. 
Yeah, here we go. Oh, we lost it. We haven't put anything in there yet, have we? So what we're looking for is 12 times the sine. So here we go. Hit the sine button. Don't, don't worry about that sine minus 1 up there, that inverse sine. We're, we're not dealing with that here. That's another day, another lesson, another time. But what we do have is 32. Now that's just the expression now we're looking for. We want to say 12 times that sine of 32 degrees. We can close the, the parenthesis there and let's enter and see where it takes us. It takes us to, wow, about approximately, let's go to the nearest hundredth on that, approximately 6 and 36 hundredths, almost, almost 6 and 2 fifths, all right? Let's pull that up just a little bit. There we go. So that's our value for x right here, all right, 6 and 36 hundredths, all right? Now, what does that do for us with the y? Remember I mentioned ka, cosine. Guess what? We're going to say cosine 32. We're going to come back to the same thing. This is equal to the adjacent. Well, what's adjacent? That's our y value. I'm missing y here. And we'll put the y over the 12, and we'll play the cross-multiply game again. Already, everybody's going like, I can do this. I know to do this. Well, we already know our, our calculator's in degree mode, which is good news. We also think, think we know now where to get the cosine key, right? So let's cross multiply and let's see what happens. We got y equaling 12 times the cosine of 32 degrees, all right? And let's go to the calculator one more time. And I'm going to keep that other one up there just so you all remember how we did it. So we're going to say 12 again because 12 is our magic number. That's our hypotenuse length times, how about it? Put a cosine in there and let's put 32. And we want to come up with a nice number. And ooh, boy, it's a little bit bigger, isn't it? We're getting a 10. And I'm going to run it again, just like I did before, two decimal places. So we're going to say that's approximately, and by the way, that's what that little squiggle mark is. It tells me we're close, but we don't get it exactly. So we're going to take 10, and we're going to bump it to 18 hundredths there, approximately. Now, these could be inches. They could be centimeters. They could be all sorts of different measurements. We didn't really specify but all the units are the same, all right? So let's put this one in here. And when I teach trig in the classroom in a high school setting, I like for the first time for us to see something else that's pretty amazing about this. Remember, some of you are saying, well, Ernie, isn't there this thing called a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that Pythagorean theorem? Yes, there is. So this is what we're going to check back through. If we take x squared plus y squared, which by the way are two legs of a right triangle in this case, and add them together, add those squares together, we should get 12 squared or close to it. Remember we rounded off a little bit? So let's go to the calculator. Let's let it work for us, all right? So let me clear all that good stuff out. Everybody knows, everybody knows 12 squared is what? 144? I'll put it up there anyway just for you so we've got it there waiting to compare, all right? How about our other little situation? Well, we got 6 and 36 hundredths. Boy, my mouse is having fun today. Unfortunately, it's taking me for a ride. Uh, let's see. We're going to square that, and we're going to add. Remember I said we're going to add the square of the second one we had, which is 10 and 18 hundredths. I'm decimal if it'll work. 18 hundredths. We'll square it. And my question is, what do you think you're going to get? It's going to be very, very close to 144 if we've got good answers. Everybody hold on. Oh, my goodness, it is. It's just off by a little less than a tenth. So, again, remember what we said. We're doing a little round off. And this one, we, both of these, were a little round up and a little round up. So that's why our answer is actually a little bit above 144. But it's really, really very, very close, very close. So, that's the beauty of the trig. So, Dee Dee, you got more than you asked for, and so did our audience. But I want you to see that just because we learned those ratios, that so katoa, it has a rationale. It has a reasoning. You say, well, Ernie, when are you going to use toa? Because we use so, H-O-H, S-O-H, <laughs> did I say that? And we use ka, C-A-H, but when do we toa? All right, T and O and A. Well, if we have the angle, and so let's suppose we'd give, been given this from the start, and we had to find this, then we would be talking about opposite over adjacent, which would be a tangent problem, all right? So 
Again, that's another day, another type problem. And also, somewhere along the way, my friends, somewhere along the way, there are some good trig episodes out there by MathLine for you all to go through and check these kind of problems and see and get some practice on. So take them out because, hey, they're on YouTube, right, guys? And let's give them a YouTube shout out right now here. How do we get to YouTube? There we go. We subscribe to www.youtube.com and we forward slash our friends with MathLine, all right? And then we've got one more thing going on there called Facebook. We also love it when you like us and you show us love there. And you really show us love by sharing us, all right, at www.facebook.com forward slash MathLine online. Now, how do you share us? Share our problem of the day. It gets posted there every evening. Now, tomorrow it's, a, it's going to be a specialized segment. So we're going back to circles a little bit, a little geometry for you tomorrow. Inscribed angles, their intercepted arcs, and all sorts of good things in that regard. So you don't want to miss out on that. It's a good show waiting for you tomorrow. But, you know, you got to tune in and watch it, or you can catch it on Facebook on down the road, okay? So, again, those are our good things. I want to take one more shot here. By the way, let's be sure we get some calls in. If we've got some more calls, we'll be glad to take and break in on this. 844-686-2378. I had a problem given to me by a student, and this one's an interesting-looking problem. All right, I think, let's, I think we've got enough time here to work through it, so let's take a look at it right here. It says, factor the expression, and it says, wow, 2x cubed plus 11x squared plus 18x plus 9. Oh, we have a hint that x plus 3 is one of the factors. Now, this is an Algebra 2 moment and a pre-calculus moment, all right? But the rest of you, hey, don't tune off with me. Don't turn off with me. Because what we're going to do is we're going to look at a nice approach called synthetic division to see if we can't get this expression to come down to a lower, lower, <laughs> easier to look at, okay? Lower exponentials and so forth. You say, really? Yeah, we have a thing called synthetic division. So what we do, we take the coefficients, 2, 11, give them some space, 18, and 9, all right? And right out here, we're going to, I call it, going to kind of line it out, and we're going to start with the opposite of x plus 3. Well, not the opposite of x plus 3, but we're going to look at what would happen if we were to get a 0 out of that. So we're going to take the opposite of 3, which in this case is going to be a negative 3. Now, if that had been x minus 3, we'd start with a positive 3, all right, out here. You say, well, all right, that's crazy. What, what's going on here? Let's play it out and see what's going to happen. Here we have 2 times, are you ready for this? I hope we're all ready for this. We've got, we're going to bring down this 2 right here, and what we're going to do, we're going to say negative 3 times 2, and we're going to pop it over here as a negative 6, all right? You say, well, that, well, that worked out pretty nice. And what we're going to do, we're going to add. We're going to add these things, just like we bring this straight down, and then we're going to, if we've lined this thing up, we're going to put a 5 here. We're going to play the game again. We're going to take negative 3 times our 5. Mm -hmm. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to multiply, just like we did a minute ago. So that gives me negative 15. Come down here, and I see, wow, what do I see? I see a 3. And th negative 3 times that is going to give me negative 9. And I'm at 0. Now, this, my friends, this is our remainder, what we have left over. That showed me that x plus 3 divides into this thing evenly, okay? Which means it's a factor, okay? That's the expression. So let's see what we've got left. We've got 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Now keep in mind, we've still got to bring that into our final answer, okay? So we're building. We've got out this, we've got x plus 3. Now let's see what happens in the next go round here. Let's break this thing open into two parentheses. Yes, we love to do our factoring. If we can drop me out there, thank you guys. And here's what's going to happen. Everybody waiting, waiting for this? How about it? We'll put a 2x and an x right here because that's how we get 2x squared. Everything's positive, so we're going to create two binomials, two binomials right there. And what we want to do, we want to get this 5x back in the middle. So this is parentheses, by the way. It's not a 7. So how about it? 3 and 1? I think 3 looks good here and 1 looks good here. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. The 3x, the 2x gives me 5x. So here's my final factorization on this one. So I hope my, my student, Caroline, you're watching. How about it? 2x plus 3, x plus 1. That is our factorization of this right here. Now, 
There are other ways, and that synthetic division is a pretty cool way of getting down to the simple polynomial. By the way, that's the x squared. There's the x. There's your 3. That creates your new one. The remainder of 0, say goodbye to it. If you don't get a 0 there, you can't play this game, okay? <laughs> you're you're kind of stuck at that point. And at this point, you hope it'll factor, and it did. All right, so there you go. It factored completely all the way down. So again, thank you all for tuning in today. Xavier, thank you for calling. Caroline, thank you for giving me the problem with synthetic division to look at. And for all the rest of you, thank you for tuning in. We've got specialized segments tomorrow. Remember, I said we're going to go around in circles some more, inscribed angles and all their intercepted arcs. Don't want to miss out on that. And you know, we'll be back live next week, right again, and we'll see you back then.